All right, guys, so what we're doing today, besides riding the snow machine, is we're coming out to cut down a big spruce that fell down in a windstorm probably about a month ago. If you guys have been around the channel, you saw me take you for a little tour over there well before all this snow was here, of course. But the spruce is actually not that far from the trail, which is quite lucky. Uh, but it is sort of over that way. We're going to make our way through the snow, jump across a little creek. We're going to delimb the, the spruce today. Uh, then we'll get it cut to length and you guys can see over here we got our handy dandy tape so we'll get that cut to length and then we'll get the tractor with the winch and we'll haul that tree hopefully somewhere through here back to the trail which we can then use to skid the tree over to the sawmill so i got all my gear here on the back of the scandic and besides being a nice ride i think it's also going to be a nice day out there so we'll get out there and make some dust and hopefully get some trees cut to length and and uh, haul them back here guys welcome back you guys have been around a little bit you know that this machine is relatively new to me i'm gonna eventually put a box back here where i can put all my cargo in including my chainsaw but just uh from a very first perspective i would say it is very wide very long for a machine i'm used to so uh gonna be very valuable once i get that in place but obviously i don't have it there today so we just strapped everything as best we could anyways let's get this old girl fired up this is a husky 555 this is the auto tune uh, version this thing's a 2017 model i think usually fires up pretty well i haven't used it in about three weeks been very very cold i don't anticipate it won't start so let's give her a whirl that's about right so you guys can see on the third or fourth pull with choke full choke fires turn the choke off sometimes it idles right from there sometimes it doesn't at the end to take it off high idle we'll let it sit there for a little bit while i get geared up all right i just shut the uh, saw off so you can hear me as we're going through here we'll make our way down this hill and as you can see like it's it's pretty deep here lots of powder we've had a lot of fresh snow lately I think we'll make our way this way. There's a creek we're going to encounter here momentarily. I'm actually walking in a very wet area. And so I wanted to wait to get in here until it was good and frozen. Beautiful though out here, I tell you. All right, so there's the top of the spruce right in front of us. You guys can see down below there, that's the creek. You just got to watch where you're walking. It makes its way down that way. So spruce fell just to the left of it right where i'm pointed oh probably a few years back and then this one fell just recently so we're gonna make our way this way throw these tag alders in the wet area the bags caught there we go and i just have to be careful where i'm jumping here you guys look down there see the water so i gotta make it over there and I don't know <laughs> where the bank starts. I think we're gonna go this way just a little bit. You guess wrong, you can get yourself into trouble. And there is an existing trail over here. Oh, my bag caught. Camera bag's getting caught. Get off of there. You can get yourself into trouble if you guys can imagine you get wet back here although I'm not that far from a trail you get wet you're got a lot of snow to make it through you guys can see where I'm standing it's pretty well at my knee here so anyways looking down that way I've got a trail you can usually get to with the snow machine but I haven't broken that trail this year once I get this tree cut out of the way then we should be able to do that if you guys remember about a month back it was coming through here with Coda. Let's just look down this way. See where that bank is. Okay. Whoa. 
Well, no time like the present. We made it. Okay, I could probably with the snowmobile give her a bit of juice and make it across there. Anyways, this is hard walking. There's the spruce in front of us. One we're gonna tackle. It's a pretty big one, otherwise I'd probably just leave it back here. But that's the name of the game, so we'll start getting that thing, thing limbed. And you can actually see my snow machine up there. We're only probably, I don't know, 75 feet, give or take. So we'll get this thing limbed, we'll get it cut to length, uh, then we'll figure out a path out of here with the winch. I think the winch is gonna pay for itself again. And then we'll see where we make out eventually. I'm gonna get back through here with the snow machine on the trail. So anyways, let's get to it. Guess I've been doing a bit of cutting. I'm out of gas. Well, I guess we gotta head on back and grab some. I don't have any out here. Couldn't carry it all in one trip. Anyways, I'll be back. All right, well, we refueled. I cut a few more limbs here and we're just gonna make our way up here. This log is pretty long actually. I'm hoping we can get some good lumber out of it. I don't know the diameter here. If we were to hold my tape up there as best we can, one-handed. You know, it's the better part at the base here, probably 16 inches, maybe uh, 18 inches across diameter. If we make our way just a little bit further, you guys can see the, the stump, at least what's left of it. Uh, you can see that we've had some significant root rot here. If you duck right in there, you'll be able to see the rot. If you have a look right there, you can see it as well. Covered in snow, I know, but uh, you get the gist of it. So what would have happened is we would have had a big, uh, big windstorm come through with the root rot, obviously a real tall tree 
blows over quite easily and that's exactly what happened. So with a tree like this, I don't know where the rod ends. I'm hoping it's really close to the end of the tree, uh, the butt end. So I'm going to make a cut right about there. If it's rotten, then I'll just keep going in 16 inch increments. Maybe I'll go even a bit more. Once I get to a point where there's no rot, I'll start measuring from there and I'll measure out my log length. So one cut right there, just got to be very careful here. Uh, I had a look and I made sure that the log was pretty, pretty well put. I don't want to be cutting when that tree's under tension just in case the tree springs back and rolls on me or hits me. And so I went ahead and had a look at that. Everything looks good. It's nice and straight. And uh, so we shouldn't have a problem. So one cut, see what happens. good we're rotten from here to here I don't know how much further and three quarters of the way there uh, finish the cut let it uh, do what it's gonna do and then we'll see where we make out You guys can have a look here. Not not good. Get off of there. <clears throat> you guys can see here. Well, actually it's not too bad, but right there, that's rot when it gets soft there. Actually, down here is good. Up here is not that good. I think uh I think we're gonna have some issues. You guys can see, if you look right there, that's solid rot there. That's rot there. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to, what am I gonna do? Obviously I wanna keep this as long as possible to get the most amount of uh, lumber out of it. But if the lumber's rotten, it's no good. So I think what I might do is I might cut one more length here. Hopefully it's not rotten and we'll go from there.
it's better. I think we're gonna go with it. You guys have a look, what do you think? I'd say it looks not too bad. Anyways, let's see what we're dealing with diameter. I think we uh, have some decent, uh, what do you call it? What are we at? We're at, uh, just so we're at 22 inches across. So that's pretty good. Uh, we'll give her a go. guys well we got four logs out of this tree here we got two 12 footers they're actually 12 foot eight we'll finish off the cut at 12 foot and down at the end we have a 10 foot and an eight foot we're gonna haul these out as I mentioned up near my snowmobile that's gonna have to wait for another day though because it is starting to get uh, late in the day so we'll put away the gear for today I'll come back out with the tractor we'll get the winch hooked to these and we'll find some way to snake it out of here back up to the trail eventually you'll see this being made into some nice lumber over at the sawmill so back in a bit
Well guys, there you have it. I just got all four of these logs from right down that trail over there, across the little creek, up this little hill, and over to this main trail where I can now skid them over to my sawmill. Now I'm gonna just hook it to the back of the winch there to skid them. There's a pretty good jag on here, especially considering that top log is, well, pretty big, if you guys can imagine, compared to what I normally cut. So I'm gonna break this load up into two. I think the tractor's got it in it, meaning it'll tow it or pull it, but it'll probably break traction before it uh, loses pulling power, and I don't want that to happen halfway up a hill. So we'll break the load up into two, two trips, two logs at a time. We'll get it loaded onto the sawmill, cut it another day. We got a snowstorm inbound, and that's another reason these got to move. I'm going to be coming through here again with the snowblower. And, well, I don't want to be hitting this, and I don't want to be having to maneuver around it. So one last thing. I know some of you guys are looking at these logs and you're saying to me, why don't you cut those flush, cut all these limbs flush? I agree with you, I normally cut them flush where possible, but in this case, you guys saw me in there cutting. I was knee deep in snow, I was reaching, I was bent down, it was precarious, and so I cut it the best I could. Not to mention some of those limbs were actually hidden, so I couldn't get them cut. I think what I'll do is I'll uh, trim them up right here at the landing if necessary. Otherwise, I'll just leave them be and finish it off with the sawmill. Last thing, if you guys get a chance to get out in the forest like I do, take advantage of it. It is a beautiful life out here. Lots of fresh air, lots of wildlife, lots of good exercise as well. Take advantage of it. You might find yourself enjoying it as much as I do. In the meantime, guys, that Wallenstein winch has worked flawlessly. And I got to tell you, one more time, I should have bought that thing years ago. This didn't take all that much effort. The most effort was me just breaking trail. Well, and saw on the uh, saw on the logs, of course. But other than that, the work getting it here was well taken care of by that winch, and definitely something I'm very happy to say I'll be using for quite some time. So let's get this tractor turned around. We'll get the logs hooked up. We'll make our way that way, and we'll call our quits. Here we go. Someone asked me before where I got these choker chains and they came with the uh, winch.
right guys well i just stepped out of the tractor you guys just saw me put some logs up and i got to tell you just on that little drive over here skidding logs the sun coming through the trees the heat on in the tractor a tune just hit right and i had some sludge i felt really really privileged i felt very fortunate at that very moment and uh, i don't know if you guys ever get that feeling but I just had it a moment ago and I'm sort of on cloud nine, just loving it out here. If you guys get a chance to get out in the woods, make sure you do it. You might find yourself uh, maybe encountering a situation like I just did and uh, it's a great feeling. Anyways, we got the logs up there, that big log. I didn't know how the tractor was going to do, although I've lifted logs that big before. Uh, I figured, you know, in the back of my head, what if it doesn't go to plan? But it did. My tractor here has loaded rear tires with beet juice. On the back, I have a 500 pound winch, so that provided my ballast. The DK series tractor lifted it without issue. On the front here, if you're curious, the HLA 66 inch root rake with a grapple. That's what I use to maneuver most of the logs around here. That's hooked up to my rear remotes with my joystick and the cap. Anyways, that's it for me. Very soon we'll be inside, we'll be sawing logs and I have a surprise coming, which makes me even more, more excited that I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys. This surprise is going to be like that winch was on the back of my tractor. It's going to be a game changer. Make sure you guys all take care out there, get out in the woods, subscribe, and I'll see all you guys next time.